Madam President, tonight we have a very happy occasion. We have a proclamation from the governor of the state of New York. Whereas each year, school board recognition week is observed by more than 700 school boards and school districts throughout the Empire State. And whereas the men and women serving as members of school boards are dedicated to children, learning, and community and devote many hours of service to elementary and secondary public education as they continually strive for improvement, excellence, and progress. School Board Recognition Week, I now therefore, Andrew M. Como, Governor of New York State, to hereby proclaim October 31, 2011, November 4th, 2011, as School Board Recognition Week. I would like to uh, congratulate all of our school board members and tell them that this is the week that you are recognized by the state of New York. How about a nice hand for our volunteers? Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. At this time, I will take the opportunity to make a very brief statement. A decision will be made this evening regarding the appointment of individuals to the varsity boys basketball coaching position as well as the varsity girls basketball coaching position for the 2011 and 2012 school year. All contractual and legal obligations will be met in making these appointments. Whatever decision is reached, it will be legal thoughtful, and what the board believes to be in the best interest of the children of this school district. The board cannot respond to or answer questions regarding rumors or hearsay, and we cannot break confidences. No matter what the community may have heard prior to this evening's meeting, no decision has been made at this point. This time, I will ask to have a motion to have speaking on non-agenda items to follow the part of the agenda on public discussion and comment on agenda items. Can I have a motion? Yes. At this time, we will take public comment on agenda items for a period of 30 minutes, immediately followed by public comment on non-agenda items for a period of 30 minutes. Comments shall be limited to five minutes in duration per speaker, whether speaking individually or on behalf of an organization. No person may speak more than once during the public comment section on agenda items and during the public comment section on non-agenda items. All statements shall be directed to the board. No participant may address or question board members individually. 
speakers may comment on matter of public interest involving school operations and programs, but may not criticize or personally attack any person connected with the school district. Issues concerning specific employees, either by name or by identifying reference, will not be tolerated and any violation will result in the speaker being asked to sit down. It is not the Board of Education's protocol or procedure in answering questions at public board meetings, so we will not be responding to any questions asked of the board or by any of the district employees. They will not be answered at tonight's meeting. At this time, I would ask anyone wishing to make uh, have a comment or discussion on agenda items to please step to the podium and give your name and address. No comments on agenda items. Okay. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm a resident of the district. There are two agenda items that I would appreciate having more information about. One is the uh, rescission or the taking back of the policy 4111 about uh, what it takes to appoint a position. Uh, I'm curious about why it's necessary to take that policy out of the court. Uh, it seems a little unusual and no reason why to buy it. The other item is the, uh, among the HR items, uh, there's an increase in salary to be voted on uh, for administrative personnel. And I'm wondering if you could let us know what the percentage will be of those increases. And if I could find those out tonight or at some other point in time, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Johnston. Are there any other comments on agenda items? been part of your policy um, um, of recent or uh, past procedures um, because I just think it's just a, a litany of many things that we are now restricted to do as citizens of this community. I will have the attorney speak to you Thank on that. You. Um, the, the question uh, posed to the board is whether or not the limitation on speaking on agenda and non-agenda items, the limitation of up to 30 minutes for each. And a minute, something. one minute. Pardon me? There's also a minute limitation that we're able to speak. Five minutes. And, uh, five minutes. Right. Um, this, this subject is covered in board uh, bylaw 0167.2. Is there any reason that we have um, we're now enacting this policy? That you have, um, that you're now letting us be made aware of, because it hasn't been read to the extent that Madam President has just read it to us. Is there a reason for it? it? It's or? been in effect um, for as long as I've been a board member, and I'm on year seven. So, um, you know, there are times certainly when we have um, more people coming out to speak on items that uh, we want to make sure it's always available um, with our policies on the back table, the procedure um, at every meeting. So, but there are times when we have a crowd like this that we like to uh, remind people that this is in effect at all times. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Do we 
we have any other comments on agenda items. Okay. At this time, we will move on to discussion and comments on non-agenda items. I have received two requests, which will be taken first, and then anyone else wishing to speak on non-agenda items, you will come to the podium and give your name and address. First person I have is Sadie Talley. same point that we were whenever I come before you a few months ago. And that was that we were requesting that Ms. Bunch be reinstated because we know without a doubt that the uh, decision that was made is an unjust decision. And we want this <coughs> Board of Education to realize and understand that this is one issue that is not going to go away. What we are requesting and now it has moved past the city of Newburgh. We have expanded to the Mid-Hudson Valley because the Mid-Hudson Valley realized that if we allow this kind of situations to and kind of treatments <coughs> to continue to go on, it will extend even out of New York State, and we are here tonight to say no more. What we really is requesting is not a hearing. What we are requesting is for Ms. Bunch to be reinstated immediately, and then we will ask the board to come back so that we can correct some of the injustice that continues to go on in the Board of Education and especially with our students of color. This is a new day, it's a new ball game. The people in the city of Newburgh is tired and it looks like the Hudson Valley is tired. So we're saying, hear our cry, because we, put, we do plan to continue to come back over and over again <coughs> until some justice is reached. <coughs> now you were going to give me an answer. I, I don't. I'll, I'll defer to the attorney. I'm not sure that we have. <coughs> I, I believe the response that you received from the president regarding how long a disciplinary <coughs> takes was based upon a statistic that's maintained by the New York State School Boards Association. Um, the proceedings are under Section 3020A of the Education Law, 
and it is a pre-disciplinary determination proceeding. No one can be disciplined who's tenured <clears throat> unless they've had a hearing that goes to conclusion. It's true that the average length of these cases has been 502 days. Many of the cases are much shorter in time, and the vast majority of the cases get settled well ahead of the hearing date. So that tells you a little bit about the law. And um, for tenure <coughs> pedagogues, a hearing is required whether the penalty ultimately is a letter of reprimand up to termination from employment. Uh, so disciplinary proceedings in Newburgh tend to go faster than the state average, and many of them are settled well ahead of any hearing or disposition. Um, so I think you may know more about this issue within the weeks to come as to how it's going to resolve. <coughs> Is it my understanding that you are saying it's a possibility within the next few weeks we will have some answer as to what will be the results of Ms. Bunn? That's certainly within the realm of possibility. That's generally the case in disciplinary proceedings. And will the public know this, or will Ms. Bunch and her lawyer be the only one that know this? The, the personnel matters are conducted between the school district and the employee. Privacy rights are respected. Certainly, employees are free to tell whomever they want what the outcome is, what a formal outcome is. Um, so that we leave to the employee to try to preserve privacy interests. I just want to my <coughs> final statement is, is it very clear that the board understand, and you as the lawyer, that there's only one thing that we are requesting, and that is that she be reinstated. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. The next request I have is from Roxy Royal. Anyone wishing to speak on non-agenda <coughs> items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Mm 
Marianne Corbett, sixth grade at Temple Hill Academy. I would like to just, and, and I apologize if I have not remembered from the bond issues that the taxpayers in the city of Newburgh, town of New Windsor, town of Newburgh passed, that class sizes were going to get smaller when we did the reconfigurating in five through eight. I do believe K five through eight is, I mean K through five is done now, and I'm wondering why our class sizes continue to go up with kindergarten being 27, 28, 29 children. We play off numerous amount. We took a major cut this past year. We took some cuts last year. We are continuing to take cuts in all of our different areas, but yet our children and our class sizes are continuing to go up in a very, very, very needy area. So how can we continue to service them properly, get them to succeed and reach to the high school if we have 27 to 29 children in the kindergartners classes and moving on up and we don't have the resources, you're saying to use all the resources, but you know what, K-1-2, I believe, would be one of the best areas to get the foundation for the reading and the math skills and everything else so we can see success in our high school. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Corbett. Timothy Hazel, City of Newburgh, New hand support of Ms. Bunce. We don't support injustice anywhere, especially in the school system. Uh, our young people are our future. And we refuse to let injustice uh, defeat us in the school system. but retired. I'm here just to um, find out. I'm, I came in a little late it's concerning the basketball situation at the high school. Is that a, a word I can speak on that? Is that uh, on the agenda? Yes. I can speak? Yes. Thank you very much. To the Board of Education, thank you tonight for being here and thank you myself for source being here. It's nice to be in the school system Newburgh because we have a great number of children here in our city who need to be taught the right way. We have a lot of parents who put a lot of money in the education system here who need their children to be taught the right way. And uh, being teaching for many years, maybe uh, almost 40 years, and I'm still teaching now, but I do it free. I would like to, on my recommendation if it could be, that you look deeply into your array of uh, candidates for the position of varsity coach in high school on basketball. Although I was a coach there for many years myself, and uh, I would like for you to look deeply in what you do. As you look across the nation, our nation there, the black male has so many things holding him down. We need to look that direction in the city of Newburgh. We need new blood in the city of Newburgh. We also need people to go, kids and parents and teachers, to work with people who have, might, might have um, uh, some problems and what they work with that person and not use their body just to play basketball and get what they have and when they get crushed raised, they throw them away. That's not the way society works. I happen to be uh, on a situation when back in the day when we had reports, we had check sheets every day. We had a contract on kids where the kids, we knew where every kid was. We know if the kid was cutting glass because there was a telephone call sent out to the parent that day, a letter sent that day in response to a kid cutting. Example, one of my kids, one to one, back in the day, I had 13 guys on my team, and six decided to cut class. At the end of that day, I was waiting at the door, 
hand me your uniform. I had seven kids left. I played the whole season with seven kids. I still end up with a 21 and one record. It is about what you expect from the kids and what they expect of you. If you work with the kids and know the kids and raise them as a father, as a teacher, as a dentist, everybody in that whole community raise them, you will develop a kid who want to go to college because or want to be a successful person in the city of Newburgh instead of getting an education, leaving, and not coming back. Also, I'm saying all this to say, I'm lucky. I've seen kids through here. My daughter came back here and she's teaching. My wife taught me to sit where you guys sit here. I sit in the city government and whatever. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to work with the kids and I hope you work with us too. So, if you feel in your heart and look at the kids, around this community here in Newburgh, and want our city to grow, you will look in your heart and make sure you will do your best for the kid, mainly our black males in that city of Newburgh, because they got strikes against them from the time they come into this world. So I'm asking you, with new blood in this city, we'll move on. We will move on. With your help, we'll move on. With the community's help, we'll move on. And we, as parents and as people in this city, deserve to work with the kids and move them forward. That's the purpose in life. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. I know I've been up once, but I, I have to speak on, on that also. I worked in the city of Peekskill, all of you know, for about 32 years. And out of Peekskill came Elton Brand. Yeah. And, and I went to the school law book today before I came to the meeting, and I know what the school law book says about how um, a coach that they must <clears throat> be certified. And and I realized that you are in a very precarious situation as a boy. But I do know what our community need. Because of the situation that we had in this community, and having been an educator, and still an educator, because I will never, ever not be an educator, we need someone that our community, all of our community, not just the black community, not the Hispanic community, not our Caucasian community, but our entire community needs someone that can bring a spark into this place that we all can look up to. And when I don't know the gentleman, I've only read about the gentleman, and I've only read good things, I've heard good things about the gentleman, he may or may not be certified. I don't know. But I know he is a good person to have amongst us. And I know the things that Elton has done for the community of Peekskill. He's not a certified teacher. But what he has brought to the community of Peekskill, if he were to leave basketball tonight and came back to Peekskill, and said to the coach, or said to the board members, I want to coach, I'm quite sure they would make a way. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, I'm employing to this board, make a way for this young man to find a purpose or a need for him. And I know it can be done. Maybe not head coach, but I know we can use him. Some way, somehow. And I have heard someone say, where there is a way, <coughs> there's a way. So make a way. And I know it can be done more. Because we have done things when I was a board member. Because we wanted it. So let's want it. And make a way for this young man somehow. 
That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. I assume you might recognize me. I've spoken to you a couple of times now. Unfortunately, I find myself coming before you again to advise you that I still do not have a valid IESP for my, either of my children. To refresh your memories, please recall that I spoke of having a CSE meeting in May, calling to request a copy, writing a letter in July to finally receive a flawed IESP mid-August, letters detailing the errors were delivered shortly thereafter, and then a week after speaking to this board, on August 30th, had a meeting with the CSE chairs to clarify and correct the IESPs. I then spoke to this board on September 18th to point out that we had not yet received updated IESPs, and were therefore without valid service plans despite the school year being weeks old. Nothing came of that except for a phone call from the special ed department stating that they did not forget about us, that they had a glitch with the IEP Direct system, and that they had called the help desk at IEP Direct and the two people that deal with that problem were in training for two and a half weeks. <laughs> IEP Direct, as you may know, supplies as part of their contract with school districts a help desk service. Strangely, in speaking of my home district, I learned that they've never experienced the problem that Newberg's noted. Two Fridays ago, on October 14th, my wife and I faxed a letter to the special ed department requesting an opportunity to see our children's files and also requested a CSE meeting for our daughter asking that it be timed within 30 days, which would, have which, which would coincide with the 10-week review period that was agreed at the original CSE meeting. Well, apparently that got some attention. We recently received, received letters, notices for proposed amendments to the IESPs. These letters were dated September 10th, signed by the CSE chair on October 5th, postmark on October 19th. Reading the documents, we were amazed that, that once again what we thought had been agreed to had morphed into contradictory statements that seemed to water down many of the things that the individual that individualized the service plans so that they would meet the needs of my children. <coughs> Much of this has been in their IEPs for years. The one notable quote these letters apparently references in our request for answers as to why Newberg unilaterally removed statements. These statements that had been in there for years had been removed and then replaced by Newberg on prior years. This quote was to state that they did not have to put them in. They were making a vague reference to no child left behind. The question was not what you can put in. It was, and still is, why did Newberg unilaterally remove these statements? statements put in by and still in my home district IEP. I hope to be able to move forward with my request to see the files and have a timely CSE for my daughter, but I request from, from this Board of Education any advice or assistance in solving these issues. Please contact or let me know who I should contact to resolve this dilemma. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Thank you, Mr. I'm actually from New Paltz, but I do work here in Newburgh, and I actually work in four counties, Orange, Ulster, Dutchess, and Sullivan. And I'm here, as many of the members of the committee are here tonight, to just ask the board to really think about the injustice that, injustice that was done to Kari Bunce, and to expedite as quickly as possible a hearing. So another injustice is not done, and that's the injustice, injustice to the children and students of this school district. I hear firsthand of students that are walking in that school not knowing what is going to happen. Not having that person that they have had for many years to be there for them. And a transition that they're going through at a, at a not a good time in their life. High school's not easy. Especially a high school that's in a, a city like Newburg or any big city. So I ask you to do what you can as a board so that not only Kari's reinstated, 
but also that the students in this school district, all students, including students with disabilities, um, are, are, have a place that they can turn to again to a person who they trusted and who was there for them and that they have that transition that they need. So they still have that will to do something when they get out of high school, whether it be college, whether it be a trade school, whether it be staying here in the community and giving back to the community that was there for them. It's very important that you consider that and not with what the average of 502 days is. That's just not fair, not only to Carter, but it's not fair to the students of this school district. And I ask you not only as a parent myself of four children, but as an advocate for children of all abilities in four counties, that you do the right thing and you do this as quickly as possible for all that um, are concerned in this. And I thank you for your volunteering as being board members. That's a, a, a thankless job many times, but it's a job that so many people ask you to do and to take seriously, and this is the time to do it. Thank you. Thank you. such as this would not want another community, if something should happen and she has to leave, that you wouldn't allow another community to benefit from her intelligence, her clairvoyance, her incredible ability with children. That's just cruel. Um, and also, um, just because I didn't know till coming here that you were predominantly white board, I'm mortified at that point. You are. say that is because some of those people had to return to work the next day with those candidates. And I ask you, who would you have favored? Who are you going to work with? Now, I think, and I, you know, I, I asked to be uh, uh, on that committee. I never got a phone call. I'm either not white enough or not black enough or too black. <laughs> One of those now, you laugh, but the fact is that in the city of Newburgh, a black man has never gotten a fair chance at any coaching position. And I'm telling you now, I think right today that that young man didn't get a fair shake because of the rating system and those people that were on that committee. Now, you might have tried to camouflage that by having five whites and five blacks, okay. but I just happen to know what's going on in the city of Newburgh. I can figure out, and I can read between the lines. Now, if we don't come up with the right person, I think there's going to be an uproar in the city. Now, I, I, I don't blame them one bit, because the way we've been running things, 
It's just not a good idea. If we want to do things the right way, we've got to include people of the community that care about our kids. Now, one other thing I'd like to, to, to bring up is uh, how many board members have, have been up in FA and noticed the bare walls up there? And has anything uh, been said to the athletic director or the principal about returning those accomplishments by the past athletes that have went to Newburgh Free Academy? I would like to know if that's been addressed. Uh, one other thing I'd like to uh, bring up, and that is, I noticed that uh, Mike from Cali does a seminar on eligibility. Now, personally, I think that the seminar should include seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. Because if they don't do the work down there and get the basics done, what do you think they're going to do in 10th and 11th grade? Right. Then we have to revert back to the kind of actions that went on uh, the last couple of years and got us here tonight. We've got to do something about that. I suggest that, that Mr. Truncalli or anybody else who's willing to do this, that this eligibility thing, this information gets to 7th and 8th graders so that they have to work their bucks off down there so they'll be able to do the work. Uh, in, in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. This is just going on too far, and we've got to do something about it. Listen, if we're not going to look out for our kids, I don't know who is. Now, I'm not saying they're the best kids in the world. They're certainly not the worst in the world, and they can be. They can be saved if we direct them in the right direction. And I don't think uh, that that was done uh, in the past few years. I know now, Looking back on it, that you people are thinking we've got to clamp down on this and get a handle on it. You are exactly right. But I hope that the handle you get on it is the right one, and it's about educating and not favoring this person and that person because they know this person and that person. All right. All right. All right. one that was just brought up. The information on the NCAA seminar has been disseminated to the 7th and 8th and 9th graders to the contact news and several other avenues that we've made available based on suggestion that Coach Bromel gave last year in regards to this. So we are addressing the younger students. There's a plan also with the guidance people to actually bring this to the middle schools and maybe have the same presentation so we can get everyone on the same page. The second thing, I'm going to take a deep breath, count to 50. I was on that committee, and I believe that we did uh, a fair job. Uh, there, there were some other situations that occurred that may not have been uh, in the best interest of the committee as far as comments that were made to the paper prior to our selection. Uh, that wasn't made a big deal of. We, we went through it. We did a fair job, I thought, in evaluating the candidates. Um, rules are rules. Uh, regardless of who the board chose, or who, who, who we chose to pick, uh, I don't know the results of the of the committee, uh, and that hasn't been made known to anybody on the committee until tonight. That's why I'm here. But I kind of resent when someone would ever make a comment in regards to my integrity or anybody else's integrity on that board. I was asked to serve on it. I did the best that I possibly could. We had questions that were pre-prepared. There was no one given an advantage in any way, shape, or form. It was done as fair as it could possibly be done. The tallies were not handled by us. They were passed on and, 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 and tabulated by the human resources people, which I thought was a fair thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure what more we could have done as far as who was on the committee. That was out of my control, and I kind of resent being referred to uh, as a negative person on that because, uh, yeah, I, I have to go to work with a person that may or may not get this job, but that has a lot to do with my character, and that doesn't have one thing to do with what my choice or my vote was. Thank you.
um, at the fact that Ms. Bunce is still not back in her position, um, you are the Board of Education, and I feel like you are supposed to be helping the kids. You are supposed to be for the kids. And that's not what I feel is going on here. Um, I personally was there with Ms. Bunce. I was in her office, out of her office. I had two classes my last year, and I was there. I watched her help kids. I watched her, you know, handle problems like nobody else has handled problems. She was linking up with teachers, you know, helping, giving these kids a plan, giving us, you know, hope to get out of the NFA. And I feel like y'all don't care about any of the kids because you're going to take away someone that gave so much to the community and gave so much to these kids. And people's siblings are looking. You know, my little sister was looking for Ms. Bunce. Where's Ms. Bunce? Where's Ms. Bunce? I need Ms. Bunce. And she's gone. Like, I tried to get kids to come to this valley that graduated with me and Everyone that graduated is mostly in college. Like, everyone is in school. And when they hear these things, like, Ms. Bunce doesn't have a job, what's going on? Like, she helped them get there. Like, I don't think that y'all see in the bigger picture. Y'all care about this basketball team? Yes, that was important. But y'all need to care about the kids that are coming now. Like, these kids need to get out of NFA just like I had to get out of NFA and I had to do the work. Like, they need to take responsibility for what they did. That's their own problem. We move on from it. How can we prevent it in the future? I see y'all taking the steps for that. But nobody's taking the steps to help these kids that are in NFA that don't play basketball or that don't play a sport or that just go to class or don't have clothes on their back or don't have food in their stomach when they come to class in the morning. Like, y'all need to look at the bigger picture. This is Newburgh, New York. Y'all read the papers every day about kids getting stabbed and kids getting shot. But what are y'all doing? Y'all sitting behind these desks and giving us orders and telling us this is what's going to happen and this is what we're doing with the money. But y'all not coming to the schools and seeing what's going on with these kids. No, Ms. Bunce did that. Ms. Bunce called home. Ms. Bunce went to home. Ms. Bunce did what she had to do for these kids and help these kids. And this is really like, you guys are going on so much speculation, but y'all don't know the facts. Get the facts. Investigate. Do your job. Like, I'm not understanding. She should have been back in her position. And personally, me, if it wasn't for Ms. Bunce, I would not be where I am today. I would not be in college with 3.8. I would not be in back to the community and, you know, funnel money into this community, you need to help them now. Like, it's, it starts now. And, again, I'm here to support Ms. Bunce, and I feel like you got me to get her back. That's it. Yeah, man. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. being said here tonight hinges on one thing, hiring practices. We know that 70 approximately 70% of the students in the district are minority. We know approximately 80% of the teachers are white, or the staff is white. So my suggestion to you is, rather than have a, um, if when there's a vacancy in a school, what that school does is they set up a committee of people in that school with a couple <coughs> other people thrown in. But now, if someone has had, I think it's 50 days of subbing, and you've been with that person for 50 days, that person has become your friend. That's right. So when you begin to uh, interview, Inevitably, it's that person that is in that school because they're all friends. That's what the problem is here. Same thing with the basketball situation. Uh, friends, interviewing friends. I just don't think that should be. Um, everybody can have good character. Sure, you can make good decisions, but you know, it just doesn't play well. Um, there are many places where you could have gone and you could have brought bona fide people in. You could have gone and brought in a West Point coach, a, a coach from, uh, from uh, um, uh, Mount St. Mary, a coach from Maris. Let them interview these people. You, what you can do to alleviate people thinking that friends get jobs because they are friends with friends 
is you have to come up with something that shows people that you are on the up and up. Maybe you need to get a, 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 a committee that hires, uh, maybe you need to go to Bozies, ask them to come in and do the hiring for you. But as it stands now, it's just not working. So I, I implore you that you need to think about your hiring practices in terms of the committees that you use to hire. And maybe we might begin to see some changes. Uh, because, you know, there is one school, and I don't know whether it's Garden Town or Forster Town, but I believe there's no minorities in that, there's no black people in that school, no black teachers. You imagine going to that school every day as a black student and seeing no one that looks like you? situations and had too many people that are sitting in this audience trying to help kids get somewhere. I've raised three children that came through Newburgh schools. It is embarrassing to every time you turn around, you could be sitting in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was sitting. Oh, you're from Newburgh? <laughs> Maybe put my head down. Miss Bunce, in my history, was a step squad director and worked with girls that had so many problems. It's unbelievable. And I just find out that she's been let go. There are some teachers in the Newburgh School District that have given their life and then some. She is one of them. I don't know what made the little committee meeting <laughs> that decided that she should just go. Her mom works in Ellenville, or did work in Ellenville School District. She could have gone to Ellenville. She could have gone to New Paltz, but she came to Newburgh Free Academy. There are so many things that people in this room have fought so long to keep things correct here in Newburgh. Some of you weren't board members, you didn't even live in Newburgh. You weren't even around. I'm one of those teachers that got laid off back in the day. I'm still standing. It came, but I'm still standing. And I'm saying that to tell you, get it right. Get it right. I only know one God. He's up there. And those of you who want to play God, stop. I'm telling you that because I can, I'm retired. But <laughs> <laughs> I know, care about the kids of New York. Care about the children of New York, New York. It's not even fun. <laughs> the kids are, I went through today, just, just took a ride around New York today. Hey, Miss Hill, pray for them, that they make it through. It's not easy. All this lack of money, where are these kids and these families going to get all the money to go to college? There's a thing on the news today about loans, college loans. I'm ducking them. Over $120,000, $40,000 in debt, my three kids. And my son, giving his life, United States Navy. Yeah. You want them to come back. My daughter is trying to come back and do things here. Poetic 
blocks, bringing poetry back, bringing the kids from NFA to poetry situations. But the kids, they did what? And a basketball what? And you blamed who? Are you for real? <coughs> no, 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 no. Okay, let's start all over again. And for the years that I've been in this school district since 1973, I have come up to this mic and I'm going to speak the truth. Coaches, Lou Brumel, I'm going to just go with Lou Brumel for right now. Bad behind Mr. Brumel, who used to go up against Skinny Avenue schools playing basketball, remember when Steve Lumber thought he was a coach. <laughs> Lou Brumel, George Bowles, Ron Jackson, everybody else who's coaches, they put kids out there. I went to college and saw what happens when people get behind the students of the city. How come we're always in the news on the negative side and nobody's saying nothing about Beacon, nothing about Marlboro, but we always are in the negative part. I'm tired of going down south, having people down there talk to me about my school district. Notice I said, my school district. I wasn't going to say a word. I'm not coming out here all night long and not say nothing. Let me see. The last time I looked, Mrs. Buns was a human being. Any of you getting fired this week? Any of you not going to have money for food? And to send your children to college? Or are we all meeting at torches? Huh? I'm dead serious. I think I had the same speech when you tried to get rid of me. And I said, are we going to stake and stone? It is so unbelievable. We should be number one in the Hudson Valley. Number one. You need to go to Newburgh and check out how the blah, 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 blah. You need to see how they work the da, 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 da. I know the work at Temple Hill. Those teachers are here. I know the work they did. I watched it. <coughs> Would you expect teachers and phys ed teachers to raise these kids from day one to get up to... How in the world these kids... How in the world... Do you miss anything like somebody not going to class? Go ahead. <laughs> attendance, attendance to the office. Oh, hello, Mrs. Miss, Miss Hill. Your child, Donnell or Breton, missed class today. There's, there, there is a situation here where I'm going to tell you that whoever said it when they came up to this microphone, and they said something better be done. Correctness. We're not going to be here for the rest of our lives. You know, we're going to be gone, 80, 90, goodbye. Turn 60, oh Jesus. I would like to be proud of Newburgh, New York. I live in Sullivan County. And you think it, you, th what? Take a hike up to Monticello schools and I say it. To those kids up there, the poor kids, I've never seen just poor people. Not all, but Newburgh does have a lot to offer. But not when you make mistakes and next you know we're the laughing stock. Because we made a mistake. If she could be, if she could be let go, why in the world? When you have other teachers that never mind. My heart is broken to hear that news. I remember the work that we did together. My heart is absolutely broken. Like I said, and I'll finish with this, there's only one God. Thank you, Ms. Hill. We have about five minutes remaining for public discussion and comments. My name is Gay Lee. I live at Forsyth Place in the city of Newburgh. I am here tonight in support of Ms. Brunch. I did not know her. 
but I'd like to tell you what I know. What I know is that when there are systemic problems, no one person can be held responsible or should be held responsible. It is, it is not her fault that the system has failed these children. What I'd like to see is a greater push to move our children off of the corner of Landers and South. And the way that's done is through education. It is the only thing in this world that once it is given, it can never be taken. I'd like to see the board, the school board, um, consider Ms. Ms. Bunch's reinstatement because the problems are systemic, not necessarily caused by any one of you or any one of the teachers or any administrator. But it's, um, I, I think it's time to start looking at problems from a systemic place so that they can be corrected, not over and over again, but corrected one time. So I wanted to say that. Thank you very much. is my cousin. It takes a village to raise a child. And it would be a serious disservice to get rid of her in this district. Um, Kari has an extensive background in education. She knows the kids well. She knows how to speak to them, which I think is very important to speak with them, identify with them. My son has made it to the 12th grade, but I, which I told him is a feat that a lot of times kids his age, his color, do not make. So, like I said, a serious disservice for Carly to be out of this district. She is a very good educator, very educated, and cares about the kids very much, more than I think a lot of other people would, could. That's my Thank you. My name is Abdullah Rahman. Mr. Rahman will be the last speaker for the evening. Um, many of you know I work for the district, everything from school violence prevention to now homeless liaison. Ms. Bunce is also my sister. There are a lot of things going on right now, so I'm trying to keep my voice from cracking. <clears throat> you know, I have a lot of respect for all of my colleagues. Together on several different things and committees with some of the people here. But tonight I'm speaking as a brother. I'm speaking of, as a brother of a nationally board certified special ed teacher, which means she's one of the best special ed teachers in the country. I'm speaking for my sister who is second in her class in administration coming out of SUNY New Post. I'm speaking because of the fact that I was also working with those kids because at that time I had a district position in school violence prevention and some of the things that some people were involved in fell into that category. The 3028 was an absolute surprise to both. And that's something that when you know everybody, it does something to you. It's one thing for the community to think that my sister is suspended. It's another thing for the community to find out that the 3028 would remove her certifications in both of her honor positions that she has earned over time and never allow her to be able to work in New York State again. No. And she would never be able to be employable by anyone. And I'm standing here shaking because I know everybody here, and pardon me for not looking up because I don't want to do anything that I shouldn't do at this point in time. I love my sister. That's right. Above all things, except my wife, my God. There comes a time when the students have to be empowered, like young Keisha was when she came up. Because as we fight to come up with policy and as we fight to come up with programs, these kids fight for their life in a walking school district that has been called the murder capital of New York State. Mm -hmm. there's, a part, there's a part that everybody here has to play. There's a part where the board has done its due diligence in 
doing investigations. The investigations have then been pushed to the side when the findings came out. Mm -hmm. There are questions that we have worked together on regarding to equity and things that I've been put on to try to assist in the district and I love these kids. I'm not even from this city. You know you will find me on these different street corners. These are the things that we've all spoken about across here. So you can recognize me staying out there with nephews, nieces, cousins, kids, whatever. Part of being a guardian of equity, part of making sure that we are doing what we can in the dignity for all life, part of what we are doing to make sure that this community is ready, is showing them that the process is that the people who are elected and everybody who's here to support them, part of that is making sure that empowerment comes in all forms. It comes from you standing up behind the kids. It comes from making sure that we hear them. It comes from making sure that I'm standing behind them and everything. These kids cannot continue to walk around saying, please help me, and everybody saying, I'm sorry you didn't raise your hand, do the do now. No, you can't go to the bathroom, you got to do it now. Go see your administrator. No, sorry, your administrator isn't here. These are things that happen. Nobody expects anyone here to become the AP or the principal to try to run the building. That is not a fair assessment. That is not what the job title is. I don't want anybody here to, to mistake that. The reality of the situation is the people whose job it is. The people who have been doing that job have a right to continue, especially when they have earned national board certification on the first shot. How many national board certified teachers do we have? We took three or four times. My sister did her student teaching in Green Correctional Facility. She died she was a cushy little high school to do it in. She went up there in the middle of a gang war and kept peace in her classroom. This is a woman who is being falsely pushed to it. And I'm gonna say it because I've also worked here as a sub beforehand in this and that. And I gotta speak on this one, so however it comes, it comes. Mr. Townsend retired. Peter Copaletti did not retire. He then came back and retired. Dino can go back to being a science teacher. My sister is the only one who loses everything. Thank you, Mr. Rahman. That concludes our time allotted for public discussion and comment. At this time, as a courtesy to all of the people attending here, this Board of Education meeting. I would like to have a motion to move the Human Resources Agenda Item W up to this point of the agenda. Can I have a motion? Roll call, please. Yes. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education of the Newburgh and Large City School District hereby appoints Matthew Brown as the basketball varsity boys coach and Richard Desiderio as the basketball varsity girls coach. And a motion? Questions or comments? Mr. Lewis. Can we uh, ask our attorney to clarify that I heard somebody said it was a law. Is, is it a law that we uh, cannot hire outside of the bargaining unit? There, there is a provision in um, public employment um, Relations Board law, the Taylor law, <clears throat> that if certain work has been exclusively performed by a bargaining unit, the unit has the right to have its members offer the work first before it can be offered to the outside. <clears throat> Should there be an offer to the outside when there is one or more qualified candidates from within the bargaining unit or an extracurricular position, a coaching position, uh, should the board offer it to the outside, it would be grieved, it would be arbitrated, and these cases are resolved in favor of the unit members. It's called exclusivity of unit work rights. It operates in almost all school districts with very few exceptions. So why did we ask Outside, 
when when there is a posting, the posting is available to those within and those outside. Um, it's possible in certain circumstances that there will be withdrawals of candidates from the inside, and uh, then there can be an appointment from the outside. Um, or if among the inside candidates there are those who the board would deem to be disqualified, it may then be an available avenue to hire someone from outside. So you would have to be in the teacher's union in order to get this job. If there, are, if there are one or more qualified candidates from within the unit, and if the unit insists upon its exclusive unit work rights, then you are without a realistic option. If you were to hire from the outside, and there's an arbitration, and there's a ruling in favor of the exclusivity of unit work, you would end up paying for two when you intended to hire one. So, so my same old argument comes back to the same as my teachers. If we got 1,200 teachers, and 1,000 of those teachers are white, and 100 are African American, and 100 is Hispanic, and I have a right to call who's going to get there. I mean, will we ever get a chance to have an African American? No. No. I mean, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> Other questions or comments from the board? Roll call, please. No. Yes. Item on the agenda is from the board president. The first item I have is a resolution to approve the adoption of revised policies number 5200, comprehensive student attendance, and number 8330, student records on two readings. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. <laughs> Yes. Second item I have is a resolution to approve the adoption of revised policies number 5441, eligibility for student athletic and extracurricular activity participation, and policy number 5459, grade level classification on one reading. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? <laughs> Roll call, please. Yes. My next item is a second reading of district policies, Code of Ethics, number 0180, 3211, and 4213. It will be brought back to you next month for adoption. For the first time. And item D is a proposed removal from the bylaws and policy manual. This is a second reading. It's on creating a position number 4111. This again will be brought back to you next month for its final reading and resolution for approval. At this time, I would ask for resolution E to be added to the agenda. It is for a consultant appointment. Can I have a motion? Yes. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Capital Area School Development Association to serve as the board's consultant to conduct a search for candidates for the position of executive principal of Newburgh Free Academy at a fee of $10,000 plus expenses and authorizes the board president to execute an agreement with Capital Area School Development Association upon approval of the same by school attorney. 
A copy of such agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Legacy? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Profat? Yes. Mr. Baisley? Yes. Mr. Whittle? No. Yes. Our next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. First resolution is to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved project NFA North Campus Edition Alterations Project 002-011. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Yes. Resolution B to award contracts for the construction renovation projects at South Middle School, Phoebe Avenue School, and Heritage Middle School. Contract one number one is masonry reconstruction. Contract number seven, plumbing construction. Contract number six, mechanical work, science room for renovations. Contract number one, EPDM roof replacement. And contract number two, exterior wall replacement. Can I have a motion? Go on. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution C is to approve the Ramapo Catskill Library System, RCLS, direct access plan for 2012 2016. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution D is to grant the request from the City of Newburgh's 21st Century Program to allow students to participate in a trip to Howard University. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Yeah. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That ends my uh, agenda items, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. The next item is a resolution to approve six facility use requests uh, from Elegant Affairs Promotion for an event honoring Mr. Ron Jackson, Mr. Mark Kemp, Ms. Joyce Howard, Ms. Sally T Sadie Talley and a group of Newark students. Resolution to approve a request from Mid Hudson Ballet, Newburgh, Juventus, Town of Newburgh Little League, and the Town of Newburgh Recreation Department. Two requests. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Noyega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Well, thank you, Madam President. My first item is a recommendation from the Committee on Special Education. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. 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 The second item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the city of Newburgh to provide 21st century after school programs for students. Funding source would be the 21st century program. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? 
My next item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Boys and Girls Club of Newburgh at the Glen Hines Center to provide after school programs to students. Funding source 2011-12 extended school extended day school violence prevention grants. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Webber? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. My next item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Sunni Orange County Community College Liberty Partnership Program to provide college readiness services and activities to students. The funding source is 2011-12 Extended Day School Violence Prevention Grant. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. My next item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with CDW Computer Centers, Inc. to purchase ta tablets, netbooks, to conduct student assessments, funding source IDEA, Part B, Section 611. I have a motion. Yes. Item L is a resolution to approve conference requests. I have a 
have a motion? No motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for my others. Thank you, Mr. Forget. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant <laughs> Superintendent for Finance. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute an agreement with the city of Newburgh to provide a community resource officer for the 2011-12 school year. Make a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Item B is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the initial 2011-2012 cooperative education services contract with Holster Bosis. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. 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 Mr.
Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution M is a resolution to approve appointments for the 21st century <coughs> after school program at Horizons, Meadow Hill, and Templeville. Funding sources the 21st century program grant. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Resolution N is a resolution to approve appointments for the 21st Century After School Program at Heritage Middle School. Funding source is the 21st Century Program Grant. Can I have a motion? Is a resolution to approve appointments for the Title I AIS support services at the non public schools. Funding source is the Title I grant for AI services for non public schools. Can I have a motion? <laughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution P is a resolution to approve appointments for the 21st century after school program at the NFA main campus. Funding source is the 21st century program grant. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution Q is a resolution to approve appointments for the after school programs at NFA main campus. The funding source is the general fund. It's a twilight program. Can I have a motion? Okay. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Resolution R is a resolution to approve appointments for the SMART program at Gidney Avenue School, contingent upon funding through the New York State Extended School Day Violence Prevention Program. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Resolution S is a resolution to approve salary increases for central office administrators. An attachment for this resolution is on the table this evening. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Kropach? Yes. Mr. Gensley? Yes. Yes. Resolution T is a resolution to approve salary increases for the non-represented confidential managerial staff. The attachment for that resolution is also on the table this evening. Can I have a motion? <coughs> Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Lefferty? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Nashby? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Resolution use a resolution to approve the tenure recommendations for an administrator and teachers. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Resolution B is for your information only. It's upcoming tenure recommendations for a teacher. And at this point, we have resolutions X, Y, Z, and double A remaining. And at this point, Mrs. Kluchek, we need a resolution to table those items for further discussion in executive session. Can I have a motion? Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. Mr.
Can I have a motion to table items X, Y, Z, and double A from the Human Resources Agenda? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Matsky? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Weinberg. Our next item on the agenda is from the clerk of the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the board's consideration tonight was to set the meeting minutes. The special meeting of October the 7th, 2011, and the regular meeting of August 30th. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Matt Tweets? Yes. Mr. Perkoff? Yes. Mr. Jeffrey? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose to review the employment history of particular individuals. The board may take further action after the executive session. I have a motion. Yes. 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 Thank you all for coming this morning. You better go to nine o'clock. Okay, Mrs. Limer. Um, we would need a resolution to remove from the table the resolutions <coughs> X, Y, Z, and AA. And I have a resolution to remove from the table and put back on the table resolutions X, Y, Z, and AA. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution X is a resolution to create a point for part time speech and language teacher position at Bishop Dunn Memorial School. Funding sources the phone balance. Can I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Bedford? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Yes. Resolution Y is a resolution to approve the appointment of a point for part time speech and language teacher funding sources of funds. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution Z is a resolution to adopt the district's revised 2011-2012 annual performance, excuse me, annual professional performance review APPR plan document. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Resolution double A. Resolution to authorize the board president to execute an addendum agreement to the superintendent's contract. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I have, is there anyone that has anything else for um, public session? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you.